C.M. Harris is the author of four novels. Her short story and essays appear in O Magazine, Pseudopod, Queer Voices Anthology, Coppice and Break Dark Fiction Anthology, and Meniscus Literary Journal. Her screenplay, The Cost of Glory, received gold and silver awards from the Queer Palm Fire Festival. Go ahead, CM. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to be reading from She Never Left. Um, it is a psychological sci-fi thriller, and it's coming out next week, and I'm super excited. Um, and this is the first chapter. The girl waved goodbye to her friends and pointed the tin speed toward the center of the thicket. Girdled by fog, the forest appeared to levitate before her. Warm air closed in, bringing with it the sweet scent of pine sap. The girl grinned wide with the strangest notion, a complete satisfaction for once. And since there would never be another night like this one, she was right. The thicket opened to her like the gullet of a whale, the hard packed dirt, its depressed tongue. As the, night, the bike's narrow tires stuttered in and out of rain ruts and across exposed tree roots, she remotely questioned the logic of this shortcut. She'd been showing off for the other kids. Oh, I'm not afraid of the dark. But now the moon had disappeared and the only light in the woods gleamed from an amber pinpoint halfway in. Branches clawed at her as she sped past them. The faster she rode, the more the distant limbs vibrated and smudged as if motioning for her to come further. She plowed through a spider web and its strands clung to the hairs of her arms and eyelashes. She let out a screech and flicked something meaty from her shoulder. But she was doing it, really doing it. In fact, she could even close her eyes and stay on the trail without veering off. She cackled at her newfound ability. The thicket laughed back. A coyote, she reckoned. When she opened her eyes again, the amber light was gone, out, disappeared, relocated, definitely not where it had been before. The bike's momentum halted in an instant as her front tire struck something hard and simply refused to roll over it. The girl's butt lifted in the saddle. She sailed through branches, the black of the woods, the indigo velvet of the sky, the black of the woods again, all of it a sickening spin until she landed with a thud on her face and chest. Eat dirt. Um, yeah, she got the meaning of it now. Gritty clay stuck to her teeth, thick as peanut butter. The girl spat it out and kept spitting until saliva ran down her chin. She rolled woozily back on a bed of pine needles, blood dripping from her stinging knees and palms. Shorts torn at the inseam from one hell of a cartwheel. Nearby, her bike lay tangled in tree limbs, the front wheel spinning off kilter, the ground tilted. She pulled herself up on stinging palms, leaned back on a rotten stump to get her bearings, then wiped her chin with the back of her hand. She looked around for the amber light, to orient herself. It was still out, still gone. Around her, the crooked forest faintly glowed with that gooey fungus she and the other kids had smeared on their skin so they could see each other in the near dark. Foxfire, one of the boys called it. Its pale green slime still striped her arms. A high-pitched buzz rang in her ear. The whir of the county road faded. The scent of licorice grew stronger than when the kids first discovered the cache of fungus. She shivered in the gathering fog. At least it cleared her mind a bit. The dewy grasp by her legs fluttered. Something small and slight wound through the blades. She squinted. A colony of ants on the move? Difficult to tell, difficult to tell by the faint glowing light. She craned her neck back and the tops of the conifer trees spun. Stars had come out, but they blurred into stripes. All around, the splotches of fungus pulsed. She shuddered and considered calling out for her friends, running back to them before they rode too far away. She tried to push up from the ground, but her brain sloshed in her skull with the effort and she slumped back. 
Hopefully the ants wouldn't bite her. Hopefully they would march around this giant blocking their path. She rubbed her eyes and blinked. That's no ant colony. Her lips parted as a small black tendril tapped at the skin of her thigh. She thought of a tiny fairy in an old fable with arms like burnt matchsticks, knocking at a neighbor's toadstool. Her skin tingled with a slight electric current. The buzz in one ear rolled into the other, rumbling and pinging as if she were underwater. The forest clarified, growing brighter. The effect was like switching on her brother's night vision goggles. But instead of a green cast, everything glowed amber. Rabbits huddled where shadows used to be. A deer stood wrapped between trees, its antlers cross-hatching the limbs for camouflage. Down the path she'd just ridden, a fox loped off toward the bean fields. As a leering white possum wad waddled past, three babies on its back, the soft crunch of leaves and pine needles tickled her eardrums. The tendril advanced. It climbed her bare leg, winding around it three times, and found the deep scrape on her knee. She drew in a great gasp of air, but as pale, but as pale webbing bumbled, bubbled up across the wound, the scream died in her throat. She'd forgotten how. Not an hour before, she had played an epic game of Ghost in the Graveyard and savored the terror of the chase, her squeals ripping through the thicket. But now her jaw hung mute, eyes watering from the refusal to blink. Her, her torn skin stopped stinging. The once oozing blood rapidly dried from bright to dark, then crackled and crumbled away. Her kneecap faded to a chalky hue. Her eyes grew wider, dry mouth gulping in fascination. She, she sat up straight. The webbing had repaired her. More tendrils came scouting, more than she could watch all at once. In their wake, foamy pale webs knit across her limbs. She lifted her hands for a moment, but they dropped back to the dirt as if 10 times their weight. The tendrils fast fastened them to exposed tree roots for safekeeping. Far off in the woods, something moved through the trees, something glowing higher and brighter than the fungus. It floated toward her with the bobbing weightlessness and transparency of a sea creature. True fear finally hit with an electric shock through her spine, brief and all confirming. The tendrils wrapped tighter. She fell limp, a rabbit resigned. She shook her head and it lolled on her shoulders. The webs dried her tears and knit her eyes shut. The tendrils found her ears her nostrils, she let out a wry little huff, bundled there like a mummy. A voice came from all around and from deep within. There is no point in mourning, child. This is what you wished for after all. The girl burst into laughter and didn't stop laughing until the tendrils entered her throat. Thanks everybody for coming.